Okay, do we have any apologies? Do any members have any declarations of interest in relation to any items on the agenda? No? There's no other matters of urgency to deal with on the agenda, and there's no items on the agenda that exclude the present public. Okay. And this is an extraordinary meeting of the authority, so there's no minutes to be approved. They will be approved at the next meeting, which is on the 26th of October. So if we go on to the agenda in full, item number two, is the implications of the emergency budget announcement last week. Ian? Uh, thanks, Chair. I'm conscious that most people in the room will have been at the, uh, the seminar this morning, and uh, so I don't want to rehash things too much. Um, obviously, we had the Chancellor's announcement last week, and uh, in summary terms, we identified that to balance the, the books, um, there were £37 billion worth of measures to be taken. And in the budget last week, he announced um, £17 billion worth of those. Um, but they dealt with £12 billion pounds of welfare savings and £5 billion pounds worth of tax increases. Um, I suppose the budget was silent around where the rest of the, the savings would come from. But what's clear is that £20 million pounds worth of savings to be identified, the majority of which, about £18 billion pounds worth, is expected from uh, departmental budgets, um, including uh, local government, including the Fire and Rescue Service. Um, it's clear that the government intends to continue protecting certain departments, uh, notably uh, health, education, and overseas aid. And to that list has been added um, defence, which means that uh, it is very likely indeed that the cuts for the unprotected departments will be substantial when they are announced. At this stage, um, it seems likely that there will be a spending review over the autumn period, and we probably won't find out um, our final uh, budget position until um, late in the, the autumn, perhaps even towards Christmas, when the grant settlement comes out for the authorities. Uh, we've modelled a number of scenarios uh, about a range of, of grant cuts, um, looking at uh, council tax increases of about 2% across the period, and modelling changes in expenditure around uh, pay awards for staff, either at 1% or 2%. And in essence, what we looked at this morning identified that the, the range of financial challenge runs from somewhere between £7 million and £14 million for the Fire and Rescue Authority. So very challenging numbers indeed. Even at the lower end of the spectrum, £7 million would require significant savings in the service. What we've always said is we would uh, look to make savings from those things that don't affect the frontline service uh, to uh, Merseyside. So uh, support services, back office, uh, partnerships with other organisations have always been high on the agenda. Um, that's where you look for the savings first. That's probably not going to avoid cuts to the front line, but essentially we should all seek to try and minimise the impact by exploiting every measure we can to make those savings. I suppose it's probably best about to stop there, Chair, as it le leads in neatly to the, uh, the next item on the agenda. <coughs> I'll have to stay for questions. Okay, thanks. Any questions or comments from members? Just to
Item 3 is the ongoing future collaboration with the Thanks, Chair. Uh, similar to Kieran, and uh, appreciate that uh, the overwhelming majority of members in attendance <coughs> were, were at the strategy um, presentations this morning. Therefore, I will not speak in, uh, in any great detail to this report uh, because you've already had um, some fairly significant input into, um, into this item. Um, as it stands, members, the um, Legislation that uh, supports the Farm Rescue Authorities and indeed the East Farm Commissioners is, uh, is extant. That uh, detail is listed in your report at paragraphs 9 through 15. Although in the Conservative Manifesto, the, uh, there was a manifesto commitment around uh, an eight month lease and uh, Farm Rescue Authorities to work more closely together. That is, uh, that is listed verbatim at paragraph 4. The purpose of this report, members, is to propose the establishment of a joint farm rescue authority and police farm commissioner committee, which would consist of the chair and the vice chairs, along with the PCC and the deputy PCC. Um, and terms of reference for that particular committee are attached to Appendix A to the uh, to, to the report. Uh, the reason for that would be to provide some political oversight for. The, uh, the existing work which is ongoing between police and fire and rescue, which has already resulted in some fairly significant positive outcomes, not least in the JCC, and the work that myself and the Chief Constable are undertaking to establish whether or not we are able to deliver further efficiencies from our transactional support functions. Uh, the I suppose the overriding reason we would want to do that, members, is because there is, uh, th there is undoubtedly going to be legislation passed, whether that be enabling or directive remains to be seen. And I think the view is that it would be very prudent for the authority and indeed the PCC to, to get ahead of the game, as it were, to, to put something in place which formalises that which we're doing already to put us in there uh, to stand as in good stead for whenever that legislation is, uh, is passed. I will pause at that point, Chair, so the, the detail is there within the report, and I am conscious that you've there. Uh, certainly those of you there this morning have, uh, have, have seen plenty more detail. <coughs> Thanks, Chair. Any comments? Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Chair. I would agree with all that was said this morning, the, the strategy one of the all that, well, all but one thing that is, is said in, in the report before us. I mean, it clearly is the way forward, and if anybody wanted proof of it, we've got the Shannon example of, of the JCC, here and just shows how well we can work together. And I think it's it's opportune now for us as a fire and rescue authority to, as again, you know, quoted words that we used this morning, we to get ahead of the game and to see just where we can collaborate more with uh, partners, um, but we're in this particular case with Merseyside Police. The only part of the report I am uncomfortable with is uh, paragraph 33, uh, where we're talking about uh, financial implications. And clearly it's clear um, that nobody from the Fire and Rescue Authority would have any additional allowance, but I'm not convinced that we should be um, offering any financial inducement to the, excuse me, to the PCC or the deputy. PCC. Clearly, um, the Police and Grand Commissioner has a salary, for want of a better description. And I also noted only last week that um, there's an advert going out from Jane Kennedy for a deputy um, three days a week for, at a salary of around about £31,000. So um, I do think really that their remuneration. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, I suppose I'd, I'd like to be clear in interest that for value for money, I'll give for 28,000 a year. And, uh, and I'll share it with somebody else. Um, but, you know, I, I, I'm glad that was brought to us. One of the points I felt we, you know, I, I had a problem with, because, you know, we are talking about a situation where I believe this is a good thing for both. It isn't, it isn't just for the file authority putting it forward to say, 
um, you know, we want some money to come along. This is good for the PCC as well, we hope. Um, a bit disappointed that Northwest West uh, Ambulance Service aren't sort of been knocking on our door to, to, to make things happen, but um, you know, that's, that's a sure thing for the future. But the second issue I've got is um, how do members feed into this into this committee? Uh, what structures should, should we have? It, it, I don't really participate, but just to be able to feed into it. Um, and, and, then, and then that way, some of that may be there. Um, and I don't mean just to get a response from it and to respond back to it, but to actually feed into it as well. <coughs> Just to say that uh, I agree with uh, Councillor Eddie and I agree with um, <coughs> Councillor Gladden and the only thing I would say is whatever collaboration goes ahead, we've got to take the lead in everything. We've got to really assess ourselves, put our stamp on it. It's not that we're glad that they're joining us, they should be glad they're joining us. <laughs> so, you know, let's not forget that, you know, when then that happens, our, our, our service goes all over the world. Not, not just in Merseyside, and not just, it's not just about the whole time, it's about the, our, our, our expertise that's been called, called on across the world. And I think value for money, we should be looking at what people are getting on at a time like this. Question, is it right? And then uh, it's not right to get that amount of uh, money, in my opinion, for three days. Thank you, Chair. Is there any delegated powers to the proposed committee? making committee at all um, and this this committee once it's established would be making recommendations that would come back to the full authority and to the police and crime commissioner um, for any ongoing decisions. It's, it's, it's <coughs> Is the Joint Committee time limited, task and finish? No. No. It's only on. Because we, we don't know um, how soon it might or how fast that legislation will be imposed. But the same things that we can do as uh, like quick wins that we can do together as a, as a joint working group that we can propose that will be beneficial financially both for the, the police and, and for ourselves. Uh, as regards to Leslie's point, but again, that needs to be placed in the report because as part of our constitutions, is that if we adopt or co-opt any member, whether it be as an advisor or anything like that, then an allowance for 
this occasion because of the individual's position, uh, experience, background, and understanding of the financial constraints and the reasons why we're doing this is to save money. Mm -hmm. It would be wrong for us to state that any allowances should be given to any person who's involved with, with those um, discussions. Um, to feed them information, uh, again, that will be hopefully then we, we, we may be in a position that as um, as we progress discussions that some sort of briefing notes may be sent out by yourself um, just to give members a heads up and to get some feedback from members about what their desires or opinions are and, and on certain aspects of uh, negotiations with the different people. So yeah, if there's any if there's any issues then feed them to, to myself and likewise I'll Yes, Chair, just a couple of questions. Um, I, I know that the, the final decisions will <coughs> come to us as an authority as far as, as far as we're concerned. But what, what I do have some concerns about is the actual, which it's down to the PC, PCC to sort out, I think. But the police and crime panel are not there as a decision-making body. They're there as a scrutinising, in a scrutinising role. So it will be the PCC who makes the decisions and then informs informs the, the police and crime panel different to what we would be doing. So I, I think we need to square that out um, very early on as the group because um, you know it's we, we could have we could have or we will have we will have colleagues on the police and crime panel who will only they will only be there in a scrutinising role, not a decision making role. I think that needs bottom out. The other thing is on the membership of this of this new newly formed committee, we go down this road, will we, will we be allowed to have alternates? Chair, the, the, the alternate situation for any committee is that depending upon the attendance by the original members of the committee, um, they would seek to find an alternate should they not be able to attend um, clearly, they, there'll have to be a, a quorum for this committee, um, and that all needs to be taken into consideration at its first meeting. Um, but I would suggest um, that the, um, the existing alternate um, process works in the same way as any other committee, um, uh, but that the PCC and the Deputy PCC are also asked to look at alternates as well in the event that they can't attend particular meetings. I just think to have equal representation, you need alternate. to know we haven't got any on this, but for that, we need equal representation. You need alternate. Just stop now, because it's only one Yeah, we'll battle this now. We should use that in any way, but I'm sure that the sort of discussions are going to be constructive because the meeting that we had with the PCC and the Chief Council was a very open and frank discussion, and we wasn't feel to be any sort of reluctance or barriers in the way of advancing the best interests of the public. And as I say, the, 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 the police uh, themselves have gone through reviews of various aspects, especially the SMU. And obviously, we've done reviews of our back office support service and also our, our station. So, the idea is that we will be some like, quick wins where hopefully the, the fire authority, the fire service, might be.
Yes. Chair, Chair, just on the recommendation, sorry to make this point, but as paragraph 33 does say that we should decide upon whether or not we want to pay um, um, an allowance to the PCC or Deputy PCC, would you not consider then that that should be in some way reflected on what we've discussed here today to be in the yeah. Thank you. 